Introducing Insider Finance, the real-time option order flow platform that levels the playing field with institutional trading. This platform automatically narrows down the volume of orders and traders can now access the highest conviction trades. In this video, we will explain how to use the various features of this platform. To take full advantage of this platform, it's crucial to understand its features. So, in this video, we will take a tour of the Insider Finance dashboard and explain how to use the various features. We will cover the ticker research page and top tickers in another video. This is your dashboard. You can see in the top left, there is a box called Real Time. This is a drop-down menu that allows you to see current day's volume as well as historical values. Real Time will be showing you option orders coming in for the current day's market hours. If you click the drop-down menu and choose Historical, it will display the ability to choose a custom date range to view orders. Then, selecting Weekly Overview will show you aggregate orders from a rolling five-day period. It is sometimes useful to see the history of a ticker's order volume because it can sometimes show you order offsets, such as with hedging. So, for example, if you see calls, then another day, an equal number of puts, you should be cautious as this could be a hedge of the previous position. But I would say, in general, I almost always leave this on real time and use near expiration orders to try to take profits quickly. Below this drop down menu, you will see three words stacked, market, and flow. This is a setting to see if you only want to see the smart market insight by itself, or to see the real time option order flow only, or to stack these U boxes to see both at the same time. Within this widget, you will also see a blue configuration settings box called the command center. When you click this, you can change the various filter settings to your preferences. Let's run down each of these to understand what each one does. The first one is called trade type. This can narrow down the orders coming in based on just looking for something unusual about them, such as the volume or maybe the premium pay. It can also look for just sweeps. Sweeps are large institutional orders that are broken up into smaller orders and filled across multiple exchanges. They can sometimes signal urgency because the institution wanted the order filled, even if it meant spreading it across multiple exchanges to create one large position. It can also sometimes mean that an institution is trying to disguise a large order. However, not all sweep orders are significant. What you want to look for are unusual sweep orders because some tickers, like Tesla for example, will just normally trade with large volumes and may not necessarily signal an expectation of a future significant move in the ticker's price. The next section is called Option Type. You can select if you just want to look for calls or just for puts. This can be based on your preference. It can also be used to not trade against the market. For example, let's say we know that the day's market sentiment is bearish. We can change this setting to only display put options to narrow down the noise of having to look at all option orders coming in. Next is expiration with choices for ultra short with a possible catalyst within the week or even same day. Next is short time frame, which would be expirations in a week to a month. Medium with one to three months and long three or more months. Again, this depends on trading style, but for me, I typically set this to ultra short with the hope of a same day or next day profit. There are some instances where there was not an actual catalyst and the position took a loss. So, if there's anything I've learned, is to take profits as soon as you see them, even if it's right after placing the trade. Even a 10% profit is better than taking a loss. Waiting for some unknown catalyst could result in possibly missing it, or that the catalyst, like good earnings, never came and your position has to close at a loss or to expire worthless. Next is price of the option. I usually leave this set to all, but you can change the setting based on your preferences. Next is ticker type. You can see that the platform has already recommended to leave this on equities because smart money will often use ETFs to hedge positions thereby giving ETFs a misleading presentation of volume, momentum, or intention. Next is how far out of the money the platform will filter for. This could mean that smart money is expecting a big move in a ticker's price. Next is ticker flow. This setting allows the platform to only show when you have an overwhelming agreement of direction for a ticker's potential movement. 
This is an important setting because if institutions are placing orders for only calls, then it is telling us that smart money generally agrees on the future price movement of a ticker, especially if you see multiple orders coming in over the course of several days. If you set this to 100%, it will only show tickers with either 100% put orders coming in or 100% calls. If, however, you are not seeing enough tickers showing up, you can drop this setting to 95% to view more choices. Next is momentum and is a measure of how much more the day's volume is relative to its five-day average. High momentum volumes could indicate a sudden institutional interest in a ticker due to impending price movement or catalyst. I usually leave this setting to vault. Finally, there's top positions. This is similar to momentum in that it measures volume, but this time it's measuring the day's volume relative to the total historical open interest. Again, it could indicate a sudden interest in a ticker. You can set this to top positions, but just know that the platform will only show those few tickers whose day's volume exceeds its open interest, so you may only see a few tickers show up. To see more choices, set this setting to all. What you see here is how I leave my settings to filter for near-term equities with 95% or greater option flow. Once you decide on your settings, click Apply Filters to save these changes. Once you change these settings, the presets that you see at the top of your dashboard will switch to custom. You can clear all of these changes by clicking back on the Configurations button and click Clear Filters at the top. Now, back on your dashboard, your actionable presets here at the top are simply variations of the configuration settings. Most of them are self-explanatory, but Moonshots are scanning for low-cost tickers with near-term expirations that could have potentially larger price movements. So, the momentum and out-of-the-money strike price will be set higher, but the cost of the option will be set lower. Let's now look at the rest of the dashboard. In the top middle of your dashboard, you have a dial that shows the general market, put, and call flow. This can change throughout the day. On the top right, you can see some statistics about the total volume of order scan. In this particular example, you can see that only about 31,000 of over 400,000 options are considered unusual for those tickers. So, the power of this platform over other option flow platforms is that it is already filtering out the normal volumes of orders and only showing you option orders that have something different or special about them. The middle box is the Smart Market Insight and is the area that changes its display based on your configuration filter settings. You can see that you can sort by any column. I usually sort by put flow, unusual out of the money, or unusual volume. Then, I look for multiple orders. So, in this example, I have this sorted by unusual contracts. You can see that the market is slightly bullish today, so I will run down the tickers on the left to look for one that has 100% calls. The first one we come to is MSOS, and note that it has two orders. Then, there is another ticker, JD, that also has 100% calls. So, these two tickers could be of interest because they are trading in the same direction as the general market, have unusual volumes of orders, and have multiple orders coming in. The section below this is the real-time option flow. Again, you can sort by any column. But what is most useful in this section are the colors. If you see a blue number, that means that the volume for the day has exceeded its open interest. Again, this could represent a sudden interest in a ticker. If you see a blue horizontal bar highlighting the entire row, this means that the strike price is 10% or greater than its spot price, which could possibly indicate that smart money is expecting a large move in a ticker. And if you see a gold bar highlighting the entire row, this is called a golden sweep and indicates that the premium paid for the position was over $1 million. Golden sweeps are somewhat rare but very powerful. These characteristics imply urgency in execution. Golden sweeps typically determine short-term market direction. One last thing to mention about this section is this column called price. This is the price of the option that smart money paid. You will want to get in at the same price or better, and you can sometimes refer to the spot price or the price of the ticker at the time their order was filled as a reference. Another interesting thing about price are these letters A and AA. If you just see a single A, this means that smart money paid the usual ask price. But if you see double A, this means that smart money was willing to pay above ask or 
In other words, smart money was willing to pay more than the normal ask price to sweep up as many options of this strike price as possible. So, it could be an indication of institutional buying to create a large position for an impending move in a stock's price. Lastly, this column, marked heat score, is a proprietary algorithm that measures the urgency that the order was filled. I often sort options on the dashboard and on the ticker research page by heat score to see which options might be the best choice to purchase. Do not trade on any of these single features. Instead, you want to see what insider finance calls confluence. This means that an array of several features start to align that support your potential trade. Let's now look at these last two widgets on the right. The widgets are identical, but having two of them allows you to view two separate things on the single dashboard. When you select options top tickers for the layout, you can further sort these by how far out of the money by momentum or volume, by calls and puts, by premium paid, and by unusual volume. The next feature under layout is options sector sentiment. I use these to see what sectors have the most activity. You can further sort this by how far out of the money the strikes are, which could indicate tickers with larger moves, and by total premium. I use these for a quick glance to see which sectors are having the most volatility, and therefore, the highest chance for price and option premium movement. Next up under the layout is dark pool flow. These orders can be calls or puts, and they are private orders. Dark pools are unique in that the details of the order do not have to be publicly available until the entire order is filled. So, it is sometimes possible that a dark pool order is not known until the next market day. Institutions use dark pool orders to disguise large orders. When you click the View button, you will see a horizontal graph showing where the largest volumes of orders were. These represent heavy areas of support or resistance. So, in this particular example, the market price of Google is 111, and a heavy area of support would be 107 to 108. Next up is dark pool top tickers. You can see at the top that you can sort this by equities or ETF. You can also see that you can further sort these by premium, volume, late buys, and sells, golden trades, and by sector. Late buys and late sells could sometimes be significant because, since the details of the order will not be released until the next market day, this could represent an institution attempting to shield or hide a large order. Next, we have signals and alerts. You can see here at the top that you can select S for stocks, C for cryptocurrencies, and F for forks. Then you can see that it tracks trend changes. Next, you have a watch list. You can easily add or remove any ticker. You'll notice these two sliders at the top called Aggregate and Flow. When you click on this Aggregate button, it will sort the Smart Market Insight box by your watch list and denote your watch list tickers with a star. Likewise, you can click the slider in each widget to sort by your watch list. And if you click this Flow slider on, it will sort the Real Time Option Flow box by your watch list. These sliders in each widget are an extremely convenient way to see if your watch tickers are showing up with any other activity after you have added them to your watch list. Next, we have top news for the tickers filtered and viewable. This becomes especially useful when evaluating a ticker for a potential trade. Also, when you view a ticker's research page, you can quickly see the general sentiment with positive, neutral, and negative news. And finally, we have top movers with gainers and losers, as well as most research tickers. Be sure to watch our other videos to come that will use and explain the top tickers and the ticker research page. We'll also be looking at how to take trades off of this platform and putting these together with the various tools to enter and exit higher conviction trades. We will also have a look at using Insider Finance's proprietary trading view chart indicators and how they can give us an edge when trading stocks or options. Crypto and forks. We'll see you in the next video.